What is going on guys, my name is Mehul and welcome to your 16th Angular 2 tutorial in which we'll be starting off with routing in Angular 2. Well, routing is basically just adding some sort of code which would allow you to use not only your single page for writing all of your HTML on it, but you can just split your content and just distribute it on multiple pages. For example, Let's just say we have this web application only, which is a shopping application, and you want to display a sort of a cart to the user where the user can see whatever he has added into his shopping list so far. So, what you can do is you can just go ahead and the user can go ahead and write your website.com slash <clears throat> cart. Well, obviously, you can also provide a link for that. So whenever user clicks on that link, the web page is redirected to this one and the user is automatically shown all of the items which have been added into his or her card. Well, we have already done that actually, but on a single page only. So we can actually just take this code and take it to a different page. But how would then we recognize that the user is on this web page? Well, to do that, we need to make use of some routing bundles or the JavaScript libraries which provide routing. But Angular 2 already comes with routing with itself, but you need to include a bit of files to make that work. So why go with something else when we have routing already available in Angular 2? So that was a quick overview of what Angular 2 routing is and in this tutorial I'm just gonna set up routing so that we can just kickstart with it from the next tutorial onwards. So if you look at the documentation of Angular 2, the routing part is quite rich in documentation. It's a lot of explanation and a lot of good stuff going on here and they have al also created one of their own applications with the Angular 2 so you might want to check that out as well otherwise you can just stick with this tutorial because eventually we are gonna cover all of that so first things first let's go back to the top and from overview we have nothing to do much here the basic says that we need to include a bundle which would then allow us to use the routing so without this we cannot make use of routing so this is sort of a absolute URL right here so we might find a relative one down somewhere so again the next thing is the base href so this base href if you don't know what this is this is quite an interesting thing what this would do is it would just set a local you can say a local path which all the files would follow if they are set as absolute so what i'm trying to say here is like if i copy this base href inside my index.html and let's just say i add app as a directory to this base href now probably my site would be crashed by now and the reason is that if you take a look here all of the URLs are shifted to app so all of the absolute URLs for example anything which was previously making use of these absolute URLs are now actually predicted as something like this localhost slash app slash so it looks like that everything has moved in a app folder but they are not actually so if I added this app right here and if I remove this even this right now so again my website is crashed for now but inside the networks tab if I look in the CSS we can see that style.css is loaded perfectly and the reason is that even though the CSS folder is nowhere in the vicinity of this index.html but still we have this CSS slash style.css ready because we are already looking into the app folder so I can just revert back all the changes I have done here and there you go now angular just recommends us to write this base href is equal to slash so that it might help angular's routing module a bit I don't know why they 
can just do it themselves but if they want us to then here we go so just make sure you add a base href of slash so that everything points from the root to the directories and subdirectories all right now it just says there's some sort of configuration let's just skip over that for now uh, let's just jump over to the area where they provide the files so this is a bit down and I guess here we are so this is their file section and again we can see that we have a main.ts file just like the angular guys so we need to include this route provider so I'm gonna just copy this inside my main.ts and better add semicolons there then again we have the route providers inserted and uh, we are also bootstrapping it with our application so here we go you can actually just do it in a one line then again we don't have a lot of components right now created but inside app.component.ts which are which is our component.index.ts we can see that these guys are importing some sort of route configuration we'll be taking a look at that what that is and how that works so <coughs> i'm gonna import that again and down here they are making use of route config but i'm just gonna keep it blank for now we don't have a lot to do <coughs> for now and as you can see this kind of looks like they are specifying a path then a name then a component so this might look familiar with angular one if you have done that so for main we are done these are the components and for the index we need the base href it's done and the router library so is this actually available i guess it is otherwise they might have provided a absolute url which was the directory angular 2 bundles router okay so this is by default available when we just npm we did npm install to the angular 2 so we can just go ahead and write that right straight away right here so we have set it up the angular 2 routing bundle as well and if i look in the page we don't see pretty much errors so that means we have set it up the routing perfectly so that's how you basically set up routing and all we have to do now is to add some sort of magical code inside this route config and we'll be good to go so that's all for this one and in the next tutorial we'll be covering about more about routing and how that works so thank you guys for watching and if you liked it then don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching again